So vulnerability. This is also a part of the assessment. What kind of characteristics do we have in our IT resources that could be exploited? So the vulnerability is, is another area where we can look and see where the weaknesses are, where we're, we have weak controls or where we have non-existent controls. So the idea is that we can use risk management and vulnerability management in conjunction with one another to achieve a common objective, and that is to reduce the probability of detrimental events occurring at the organization. So here's a visual framework uh, that you can see in the text. Basically, this one again uses a life cycle type approach, identify, assess, uh, remediate, and maintain your management program for vulnerabilities and fraud. So here you can see it laid out in a table format. And the vulner vulnerability assessment takes place during the identification and risk assessment. Vulnerability management kicks in once you start to figure out the remediation for a potential fraud and then maintaining that fraud management system uh, going forward. One last thing you want to make sure you have is availability. So disaster recovery, business continuity are key issues there. Lightning strikes, you might lose power. You may have an earthquake. You could have floods. All kinds of things could take place. There could be a political event that results in your building getting blown up. So things like that, uh, depending on the nature, you want to have some way to recover from that. So an uninterruptible Power supply, UPS, is good for that first level, just losing power. Fault tolerance, using redundant units to allow our system to keep operating if part of the system fails. I did some work at uh, Bank of America back in the day for their foreign exchange trading desk. They had a general ledger for that, that you know the foreign exchange market is always open. It doesn't close down 24 hours a day. So they used something called a tandem computer back in the day that had two of everything, two CPUs, two motherboards, two power supplies, and so on and so forth. So that was kind of an early approach to fault tolerance. Now we have mesh, grid, cloud uh, systems that allow one component to fail with us barely even noticing. Virtualization, cloud computing, another way of doing that, uh, that will be kind of an extension of fault tolerance. Now, if something does happen, companies need to have a disaster recovery plan in place to figure out what they can do to get back up and running as smoothly as possible. One of the things that we do um, in business continuity management is a part of that uh, because you want to determine, well, what do we need to keep revenues coming in? So the first thing you want to do is make sure any kind of a sales system you have in place does not get affected if you can uh, the GL, yeah, you can lose it for a day or so and bring it back up and fix things. But you don't want to lose that opportunity to make sales. We, for example, we send what we call a lifeboat packet. Basically, it's a backup of all of our systems as a university to another university uh, over in uh, across the Atlantic Ocean that allows us to get back up and running on their platform should something terrible happen. That is a quick tour of some of the issues regarding information security, enterprise risk management, vulnerability management. Hope you found it useful.